and stand for the pledge. I'm standing. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Brennan. Honorable Mayor Ron Shaver. Present. Council Member Brian Erty Allis. Here. Doug Shasso. Here. Allison Howe. Here. Lynn Anderson. Here. Lynn Deal. Here. Kevin Lindell. Here. Okay, the first item on our agenda is a presentation on approving an amended policy pertaining to the request under the Colorado Open Records Act. Mr. Wilson. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Uh, every municipality has a CORA policy. Uh, Fort Morgan has had a CORA policy for many years. Um, from time to time, these policies have to be updated. Uh, Fort Morgan's was last updated 13 years ago. The law has changed. Open records practices have changed. Um, the city has kept up with common practices for administration of open records. So a lot of what this policy does is just reflect current practices. For example, nothing is going to change the fees. We're not changing what records are subject to release or any of those sorts of things. But the policy does clarify certain things. For example, it clarifies that under, under the fee schedule, the first hour is free so that people of lesser means have access to public records. It's a good public policy. Uh, but what this is, and then from then on, you pay 30 bucks an hour to, um, you know, allay the costs uh, otherwise borne by the taxpayer. But what this has resulted in is some people, instead of asking for five hours worth of research, they'll file five CORA requests to try and get the one hour free. The policy makes clear that those can all be treated as a single request. So that's an example of the sort of clarification that's in here. Um, this policy is based on one utilized by a number of other municipalities. It was initially developed by the Colorado Municipal League um, about a year and a half, two years ago. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, John Brennan has also reviewed this. He's the uh, custodian of records for Fort Morgan. So, of course, he's the guy out on point on these CORA requests. Hi, Jeff. I just have one question. Um, mm -hmm. And this could be, this is a combination Jeff question and John question. How will, so um, since we're already basically doing these practices, nothing's going to change administratively for us. It's just bringing our, um, the language and our policy up to date. That's my impression. I mean, for example, uh, we're authorized, we can charge $30 um, for, per hour for research or retrieval. That's what we charge. Um, the, we have requested that people pay a deposit of 50% of the total cost that likely to be borne at the time of the request. Previously, that hasn't been reflected in the policy. Maybe I'm wrong about that, John, but uh, this policy makes it clear that we can do those things. Um, and it's really for the benefit of the public. So they know when they file a core request, what the rules are. Another thing that's made clear is that we, this is an open records request practice. Um, it isn't a uh, practice where we make records. You can only request records. It's often that people ask the government to create a record that doesn't exist for any other purpose. So this also addresses that. Well, was there any changes in um, just the, the public computers and stuff like that? Um, is, was that is that all about the same of what records can be brought? Oh, forward? absolutely. Um, not no change at all in what records are subject to release or not, and the manner of release. Uh, digital records. Uh, there's quite a bit in Cora itself now that addresses our responsibilities with respect to digital records. So none of that is disturbed here at all, Lynn. Okay. I did I've never I didn't ever look at the other ones. I didn't have anything to compare it to. I didn't know what you know what changes had taken place. 
This one's even more awesome than the last one. Okay. Well, I think it'll help and we'll recoup some of the costs that we incur on some of these core requests. If everybody's had a chance to look at it and has no problems, I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I offer a resolution approving an amended policy pertaining to the records under the Colorado Open Records Act. Second. I have a resolution by Lynn Deal and a second by Kevin Lindell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries, or that resolution carries. Next is a presentation on a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign an amended intergovernmental agreement pertaining to the Fort Morgan PD uh, special response team. Chief Crone. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm for discussion is approval of the uh, special response team intergovernmental agreement. We've had an IGA with other agencies, law enforcement agencies within the county since 1997. Um, this IGA covers utilizing specially trained personnel for incidents that may arise within the county, such as uh, hostage situations, armed to barricade subjects, and execution of certain arrests and search warrants. Um, these incidents are typically beyond the normal control or normal staffing and equipment, and more importantly, capabilities of an individual agency. Uh, so we um, have a specially designated team to utilize um, to handle those kind of situations. Um, we've had uh, different forms of the IGA throughout the years, um, most recent 2009, but it actually expired in 20, um, I believe 2015 is when the re uh, renewal is supposed to be. One of the changes was um, defining some of the um, command and control issues that we've had throughout different agencies, and also um, taking out a couple of the agencies throughout the county that no longer have been participating in this IGA. Um, as well as um, rewording some of the time frame for the renewal. Um, really, the substance of it has not really changed at all. Um, <clears throat> my recommendation, obviously, accepting the updated uh, CERT IGA, and I ask that the council take action on accepting that uh, IGA. Barring any questions, that's all I have. I have one, Jared. Um, so this is uh basically a service that we offer to the other agencies and we pick up the cost it is a combined um the, the three agencies uh, fort morgan and morgan county sheriff's office and Bryce police department all have members on the team oh, okay um, give an example we had a call out last week where obviously all three agencies are involved um, typically each agency picks up their own um, cost of if there's any overtime and so on but other equipment, so we had to use certain uh, um, certain types of equipment that we have to get replaced. Usually when those get replaced, it's all agencies pay a third of whatever that uh, cost is. So obviously each agency has to um, pay for their own uh, personnel to be involved in that, but the equipment so on has typically been shared among those three agencies. Okay, cool, thank you. Hey, Jared, I have a question for you. Does that still work for like if we have to run up to uh, Sterling or Akron? Uh, yes, we've, uh, out of the seven counties within the judicial district, we've um, done operations in all but one of those counties. It's not uncommon, especially in the kind of geographical area that we have, uh, largest in, in the entire state. Um, no other agencies um, typically can perform by themselves. We've assisted, as an example, um, Greeley's uh, tactical, or I'm sorry, uh, Sterling's tactical team. We've utilized personnel with them and vice versa. Not uncommon nationwide to be able to do that. Um, obviously, if there's any cost to that, it's not uncommon to do restitution for the, for the suspect that's involved, similar to the one that we had a week ago. Um, we request restitution to hopefully pay for equipment and so on and so forth, but it's not uncommon to actually go outside of the county 
but in turn, we do get uh, we request some kind of assistance um, uh, from that agency as well, wherever we can. Thanks, Jared. I, I, I thought it hadn't changed, so. Correct. Yeah, I remember when we were on council before, there was a tornado, Brush had a tornado, and we sent down equipment and helped them out that way too is um, because and mutual aid agreement. about some of the yeah and those are kind of those are kind of different circumstances um there are some statutes that govern emergency situations that uh, whether it's uh um oh, weather events like tornadoes and so on and so forth or even some kind of incidents where um you don't have to have an in intergovernmental agreement this is pretty specific as to what kind of situations the agency is using. It's not uncommon for um, Brush or the Sheriff's Office to request assistance. It might be for a short time, but this is above and beyond those kind of situations where it takes more than just a, a routine response for patrol. This is uh, uh, kind of a, a heightened situation. So a little different, but it's still not uncommon to assist requests. We've had other agencies come in and assist us on things that are beyond the, the manpower typically that we'd have working at the time. Wasn't there a guy that in Sterling and he kept going to brush and all over it? Is that different than what you would be doing? That would be an emergency. Yeah, it'd be an emergency and I, I'm not sure what you're referencing, um, but this is typically, uh, again, some of the the, three, the few things that I mentioned, hostage situation, armed barricaded okay. incidents and uh, certain arrests and search warrants. Um, typically those are pre-planned events. Um, outside of that, you know, we might have a, a, a vehicle pursuit that goes to different counties, Logan County, one we had a year, a little over a year ago, yeah, um, went around different areas uh, to include Morgan County, different jurisdictions, Fort Morgan and Brush. Um, that is something completely separate from that. So um, you could say it's similar in that we would assist any agencies requesting uh, assistance on an emergency situation. This is a little bit different from that. It's more defined because we just needing an IGA to definitely specify who does what is why we have this outside of the other one that's uh, more so controlled by statute. Okay. I think it's a great idea to be, the more you can work together. Yeah, definitely. We've had this going since uh, actually 1995. We didn't have an IGA for a couple of years after that. So this is just a, for us, it's a routine, routine thing, just a little bit of updated information on the new IGA. This is kind of dotting the I's and crossing the T's and getting it back implemented. I think what you're thinking right. of then is mutual aid agreements where we have with other sources. What Jared is bringing forward is specifically um, like SWAT response or okay. police um, involved situations, but we also have mutual aid agreements with Brush, um, other agencies that yeah, oh, okay. will send things out. So, has everybody read over or taken a look at? And if they have, I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I move for a resolution for approval of the SRT IGA and the mayor to sign. Second. I have a resolution by Kevin Lindell and a second by Lynn Deal. My roll call. All Aye. in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. Looks like it carries. Thank you, everyone. Next is presentation and discussion on a business assistance initiative. Mr. Nation, Ms. Crossway. Okay, I'll probably just turn this over to Sarah and let her handle it, but this is something Sarah's been looking at and uh, we've been talking about since the whole COVID thing broke out and um, trying to find out if there was a place for us to provide some assistance as a community. And I think Sarah's kind of found maybe a little, a little niche that we can help out hopefully some people, some of our businesses with. So I'll let her go through the memo that's in here and what exactly we're asking for. So go ahead, Sarah. You're on mute still. Did Nelson mute you? <laughs> Tap your space bar. There you go. Oh, there you go. Now try. 
Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Council, so in your packets, you have a grant application we put together um, and a memo just explaining the grant itself. So we would be asking to create a program which would be a COVID-19 business recovery grant program with a funding amount of $50,000. And this would be direct grants that would be available to our local business community here in Fort Morgan. Um, some of the qualifications for the businesses to apply for this grant would be that they would have to have an existing commercial storefront. They would have to have at least, uh, or I'm sorry, 50 employees or less. And they also would have to have looked and uh, received services or at least consultation from the Northeast Small Business Development Center office to ensure that they're maximizing the various types of programs that are available, not only through the federal level, but also through the state, if any. So this grant program really is meant to come in and fill in the gap uh, where some of our businesses are unable to qualify for some of those loans through the SBDC. And what we just found out on Friday was that the two loans that a lot of the businesses were applying for, which was the PPP and the EIDL, Emergency uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, both of those have run out currently. And so we're waiting on Congress to hopefully pass another stimulus bill to go ahead and refund those programs. But in the meantime, this grant can come in and hopefully fill in the gap. The grant is really open in terms of what the funds can be used for, but we are asking any businesses if this grant program is approved to then supply us with receipts and invoices as to what they use it for. What I've heard in the community from some of our businesses is that they need money for operational expenses, like buying inventory. Um, they also need money for payroll or for marketing purposes to let the public know that they are still open, but are maybe providing their services in a different manner rather than coming into the store. The grant program is, itself is not meant to obviously alleviate all the problems that our small businesses are facing right now, but it's hopefully one step forward in assisting them uh, while they get to this difficult time. If you guys have any questions on the grant program, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I don't have any questions, but <clears throat> I do have, I, I think it's great. I, I uh, commend you, Sarah, for thinking ahead and doing this because I think it's a great way to um, give something back to because we get sales tax from all those people. And now when they're down to, to try to do a little bit back and to fill in the ground. The problem that I have is with some of this stuff and it's kind of council in general. Um, and I'm not advocating go back to every week. I'm not at all, but I'm used to knowing what's going on. And when we had a work session, I knew it was coming up and then voting. But uh, this particular interest, I have so many people call me a lot and I like it, it's, it's my job. And so I heard that um, someone called me and asked me about the city grant program. And I said, well, I don't know anything about it. And plus uh, some other things I needed to know. I, it was hard to, to, I had to go out and educate myself. And then I did, uh, I, I reached out to uh, Merle and some of those and they invited me to be on that um, round table. And then that's where Sarah, I heard from you. But I, is there any way that some of the staff could um, let us know what's coming up or something like that? Because it, you feel like, well, I, I don't know what the city's doing. <laughs> Makes you feel pretty dumb. But, and then also I called all the downtown people and because I have their phone numbers and I work with them a lot and I just was to check with them and I, and it was very interesting and I was pretty happy that like Flower Peddler, she was doing good. She said she was in on, on an agricultural grant because of the flowers, not grant um, program with, with the, uh, the restrictions. So she was able to do that. She was able to stay open three days a week, and then she did curbside. Ron Chufit, he, uh, people called him. He was able to do pretty well. And I was the health food store. She was doing a booming business because people are buying lots of vitamins and things. So that I was glad to hear that. I did um, get a hold of, and I have some questions for you, Sarah. With um, she has all about you. And the, she told me that um, she had talked to you, Sarah, and she wanted me to ask you, she needs money for advertising. You did mention that. 
and utilities and she had her problem was her uh, she has she buys way ahead so she has inventory debt that that um, she wondered if that would qualify to pay some of her bills on the inventory that she's already bought yeah for the grant specifically the way we've written it it allows for each business as they're completing the grant application to be able to put down what they need the grant money for so something like per purchasing inventory could possibly qualify. It's on a first come first basis. And as we sit down and review these grant applications that come through, those are certainly be things that we keep in mind. What about utilities? Utilities can also be a cost that can be covered as well through the grant, through our grant specifically. Okay, and, and this is an interesting issue. She was, um, she said that she could sell food, people could come and she did curbside service that she could sell her food products, but she has purses. And if any of you have been into All About You, um, her clothing and her jewelry and her knickknacks, she wasn't allowed to sell that. But she said, you know, people go out to Walmart and buy clothes and all that stuff, but she needed to, to have that. So I was gonna ask, um, she did call the health department yesterday and they allowed, she can do that the first of the month, which is gonna help her because she was really struggling. But that, that just doesn't make sense to me that these dollar store and Walmart, they can sell all those products, but she, she couldn't. She could only sell her food products out of the store. Yeah, no, I understand. And we've gotten that fr frustration from other businesses as well. Unfortunately, that's something that's in the jurisdiction within the health department as to who they decide to allow to stay open or not. Yes. The big box stores like Walmart, Dollar Tree, they sell essential items. And so unfortunately, their inventory is mixed with non-essential items, which does allow them to continue to sell clothes while they sell things like food, toilet paper, all those necessities. So I think that's where it gets a little confusing for the public. But Unfortunately, it's not a rule that the city of Fort Morgan has imposed on our businesses. It's coming through the health department. That, there wasn't an indication that that was the city at all. It was just a problem that was out there. I was going to ask Allie, but she, they're, they're going to raise that up in, on the, fir the first of May. So I think that will resolve itself, but kind of an interesting thing. For downtown, they need it the most. But anyway, yeah, I think I like keeping our eye on what we we've brought in front of you is what we feel is important. Um, I do apologize, Lynn. We we've tried to with you know big resolutions and big con conceptual ideas. We try to get those in front of council a full meeting before we request you to vote on anything, so we can have in depth discussions concerning implementing and moving those things forward. Um, but honestly, because of our meeting schedule, we just didn't feel that we wanted to have an informative discussion about this program this week and then wait two more weeks to actually vote on it. We, yeah. That was a decision I made. And so I decided you know, that we would go ahead and bring it forward. So yeah, we do try to get as much of this in front of you as we can. Um, and so we'll keep doing a better job and um, we're trying to get reports out to the council people, you know, with some of the departments that, and they're going on. And so we've had to adjust to the way we do things. We don't have table files anymore and, and all this. And so we're trying to, trying to get you as much as you need, but you know, if you feel that you need more information in the middle of the week, just get a hold of me and I will try to get you whatever you need. But right now we just wanted to bring this in front of you because we yeah. feel that we want to get approved. I, I love the idea, the innovation, that you did was was really i i think it's wonderful so it, was, it just was i came in the back door and and i, I get sarah had reported it at their meeting so they called me and wanted to know about it and i go well i don't know so, anyway, so it sounds to me like know. that the problem is letting it out into uh the community before you're letting council know so the council gets blindsided yeah, that, I had questions that was, about something that we have no idea about because we haven't been informed. So I think it's a matter of watching that aspect of it. No, yeah. you're right, Kevin. That's we. I got to do a better job of keeping this stuff in front of you guys first. I have a question. Um, my first question would be: Is where is this fifty thousand coming from? I think it's a great idea. I wonder even if fifty thousand is going to be enough. If it's five thousand dollars, possibly that's only ten people. Um, but also, where is this 50000 
coming from, I know it wasn't budgeted for because of con this wasn't happening in 2019. So it's that was one question. And then my second question is, it says consultation services from Northeast Small Business Development Center. Does that mean they have to meet with them prior to putting in their application? Yeah, so the funds, we're requesting it from our reserves. And then in terms of them, they need, they would need to either have a, well, it's honestly just a phone, con just contacting the Small Business Development Center office. And so our representative for the area here is Mer Merle Rodas. So they would be contacting him. It's a simple phone call or an email just to ensure that they're exploring their, the public resources or, you know, the state and federal resources, resources first before they come to the city. Right. And as we know, they're out of money right now. The Fed, feds are out of money. So, and we're not getting any money from small business to offer this grant. I would like them not to have to make the phone call to Mural, Mural and just to expedite it and get it done. And then also just as far as the 50,000, just from the reserves, I, I sat in a lot of council meetings prior to being on city council and, and now on city council and when everybody asks where the money's coming from, it's always the reserve. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's funny because our next discussion is gonna be in regards to revenue shortfall. So I'm just curious how much is just sitting in the reserves and how often can we go tap into the reserves? Well, that kind of goes with my, que that goes with my question. Um, what reserves are they coming out of? I think when we looked at this originally, we were just looking at general fund reserves since it was just business-based community. That's where Sarah's budget um, originates from. She actually has a community assistance line item in her budget. Um, we would just, we were planning on just overspending that line item by the 50,000. Um, we may be able to make it up in other parts of the budget through the rest of the year, but I, you know, um, I think we just wanted to make the request that we would take it out of reserves if we couldn't balance, you know, some other expenditures throughout the season. What is their current budget for that light item? It's 50000 and that's the 50000 that's budgeted for the existing grants that we have right now, which are facade and as-built grants. So if somebody puts in something, say they put in the application, and... They ask for 5,000, but you look at it and you're like, you know what, we're only give you 1,500 or 2,000. Is that something that could happen? It just depends on what they're putting on the application in terms of their expenses. So if it's something that's out of line with what the grant is intended for, then yeah, that could mean that they could possibly be um, approved for a lesser amount than if they were to request the full 5,000. And just keep in mind that the maximum award is 5,000. That doesn't mean that every business needs 5,000. I'm sure a lot of them do because they're experiencing a hardship, but the maximum grant award is 5,000. They can request something as little as $100 if that's what they need. I think this is a great idea. And if it goes well and people are still having problems, I think it's something that we might even readdress like in 30 days, seeing how the state opens up. Um, the only problem that I would have voting for this is having to consult the Northeast Small Business Development first prior. I think if the city is the one doing it, there's no need to reach out to, to Merle right now, especially when there's no funds anyways. Well, there isn't any funds. The reason to have that in there, I think, is to ensure that while we want our businesses to know that the city does serve as a resource for them and assisting them during this time, we also want to ensure that they're looking outside at their other resources. And so the Small Business Development Center is a first resource that they should be looking at. And while there are no funds currently available, what, what has been coming out of the Small Business Development Center office is letting businesses know that while Congress hasn't approved anything yet, there we do believe that they will continue to fund those programs like the PPP and EIDL. And so we want our businesses to be prepared and to have that connection and conversation with Merle to ensure that when those programs are refunded or funded again, that they already have their information, their paperwork ready to go. So they will call Merle and then Merle in turn will call you, John, or Brent and say, I spoke to this person. No. So all I'm asking in the application is it's a yes or no. Have they contacted the Small Business Development Center? Yes or no. And what services did they receive from them? <laughs> 
Right, but it says to get this that they have to consult the services. And then the application yeah. says yes or no. So if they check no, then they're not gonna get it. It's, so if they check no, then at that moment, we would ask them to go back and to contact the Small Business Development Center. But the intent of the question is, do they contact the SBDC? Do they get some sort of services or consultation from them? And what were those services like? So if they contact the SBDC and the SBDC says, sorry, at this time, there's not really anything available for you, that's all they have to put in the application is, I contacted them, there aren't no programs available for me at this time. Uh, and you're not gonna do any follow up on that? No, because it's a, at that point it becomes a privacy issue. And so the services that the SPDC provides to our small businesses isn't something that I can go and get public information on. It's private. Okay. But again, I see there, there's no follow up on it. Um, it's a first come first seven braces. Everybody's gonna be blowing up Merle's phone. And in the meantime, other people that might be getting it that don't need it as much as somebody that does need it because they haven't contacted Merle yet. So I, well, I, think, I think it's a good thing. I just like thing. to have it stricken. I would personally think that it looks like it was well thought through and a good thing to make sure that they're utilizing uh, or looking into federal possibilities and everything before they're turning to local because they may find something that would work federally and then that's that one less person drawing off of the local uh, 50,000 pool. Um, I also spoke with Kristen uh, Bowen, the Morgan County Economic Development, and she said that there's uh, several other grants available for economic development. And the, right now the, the matches are, are, she said like 80%. So she's looking up some of those for us also, and probably, um, Sarah's talked to her about that, but there, you know, there's some other things. I just, I like to exhaust everything as far as grants, because sometimes you can match the grants, but I think key on this would be to get the information all out. I want to talk to you about something else, but I look at this as an, kind of an investment because of, there's some of them that are barely hanging on. And if a little bit of help could keep them in until we start going again, if you lose the business, then you're going to be out the sales tax big time. So a little bit of investment to keep them going so that there still be a business here will benefit us in the long run. Now, that's how I feel about it. Um, Cause some of them are really struggling. I think we're going to be, I think it's loosening up. I, everybody's been holding their breath, but I think we'll be okay in May if they open up some of them that will help but I kind of look at it that way but it's really a nice gesture for because they pay sales tax that's where we get our money and it's an investment back into them a little bit but oh this is what I was going to say um, I have been uh, since I visited with Merle he's been sending me stuff to my email and then I've been able to send that out on Facebook and to people, because I know a lot of business people and things that, that they don't know about things. So I, that's what I wanted to say. If you could, if Sarah could put something out and get it so that they don't, you don't have to say, well, go look at the city website. <clears throat> if I was able to get something, boy, right now Facebook is on fire and that's a way to get the correct information to business people around here just a thought well what we've been doing right now is as we're updating that business resource page on the city webpage um john's been sharing that on the social media platforms that we have letting the community know that we are constantly updating that page when new information comes out and so the web page is really designed to be a platform where you can get updates as they're coming out and it's all within one platform rather than going through different sites. So that's why we have that COVID-19 business resource page. But, but we, are, we are council and people come to us a lot, a lot, a lot. So to get, get us access besides going in and looking at the website, it's just, I'm, it's just a thought. Think about it a little bit. Okay. But great idea. I love it. Love it. Thanks for thinking ahead and to care for our businesses. 
I only had two questions about this. First question was already answered about budget. My second question um, was just about language access. And so if there's a way that this can be made just as accessible to our Spanish speaking and Somali speaking business owners. Yeah, I can uh, reach out to, I know uh, One Morgan County, they provide translation services. And I can certainly reach out to them and have them translate the application um, so that it's accessible to all our business owners. Thanks. So if this passes this evening, people can start turning in the application the tomorrow. Is this application already on the website? No, I, you guys would have to pass it first and then I would make the application link live tomorrow morning. And I would also distribute it amongst my contacts that I have for businesses in the community. There'll okay. be a lot of questions on what would be eligible. Well, that's why it's very open-ended on the grant application itself. It allows the businesses to write down what their needs are specific okay. to their business. Okay, gotcha. I just talked to a lot of people, so I like to get the details. So I don't, that's why I'm asking a lot of this stuff. I know what people ask me, so. Any other questions? Lynn? I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Doug? Nope. Looks good, Sarah. Thank you. Um, with that, I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I offer a rev resolution on the Business Assistance Initiative. I guess that's all I can say. Second. I have a resolution by Lynn Deal and a second by Brian Erty Alice. All in favor? All opposed, same sign. Unanimous, Mr. Brennan? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Can I ask that when the funds are out, when you do know, can you send counsel an email or something and let us know that? Okay, we can do that. Thank you. Okay, next is a discussion and possible direction on expected 2020 revenue shortfall and potential budget, re budget reduction. Mr. Nation, Ms. Kenny. Okay, I'll, I'll turn this over real quick to Jeannie. You guys have in front of you a spreadsheet that she's prepared and she can walk us through what assumptions she's made and then we can have a, a discussion from that. Go ahead, Jeannie. Okay, um, the, the spreadsheet that you have starts out with something you're a little bit familiar with and that's the, um, that's the cash reserve. And the cash reserve, um, if you look at the, the general column there, the cash reserve um, at the beginning is 23382317.49. And I have the different places it is. I don't know that that was necessary, but it kind of shows you how accessible things are. We have to, you know, cash in things for some of the, the cash to be able to be taken out of investments. Anyway, the, the next line is the planned reserve use. And that means those are the things that when we set up the budget, the fund would be short by a certain amount. And we would say, we're going to take that out of reserve. And so before we start talking about how much reserve we have, we need to take out what we are expecting this year to take out in order to meet the things that we were planning on purchasing. And so that's where you see the amounts coming out very high out of water. And that's because we did have to make a really large payment right at the beginning of the year there. Um, so then that next balance is really the one that's bolded there is really the balance that we're talking about that, that sits in our reserve that if things were to go the way we had originally intended them to, that is how much we would have at the end of the year. So that's why it's 1231.20. So then I, I did a, a, another one where I said, um, if our utilities aren't paid, because one of our big ways of getting money in the enterprise forms, in fact, our only real way other than a little interest is the, the utilities payments. And so I figured out if 5% um, if didn't pay their utility bills this year because of things like, well, Sarah uh, was nice enough to get me a thing that shows the unemployment, the number of unemployment claims. And the unemployment claims went from, this is just March 14th to April 4th. So we still got three more weeks of data. We get the data at a lag, but it went from nine 
to 41 to 191 to 215. So the unemployment, and this is just Morgan County. And so the, the unemployment uh, claims are out there um, causing people to not maybe have as much funds. Um, they might get some help with it from the feds for a while, but there's a possibility that people are gonna be uh, less likely to pay their bills. So I did three different scenarios. One was with 5%, um, and then the next one is with 10% of utilities unpaid. And then the last one is a real, you know, sad scenario, but it's what a lot of the other communities are using. It's a 30% not paid. And so that estimates how much our revenues are going to go down in those different scenarios. I use 30% for sales tax, and I use that all the way through. And the reason I use that all the way through is because with all of the businesses that have been hit so badly, it's going to be a recoup time for them to be back up to where they're paying the kind of sales taxes that they were paying us before. And so, I mean, we could change that, any of these things. It's just a, on my big spreadsheet. There, it's just a change of a percent. We can look at it at different amounts and, you know, just different tests of what, what would happen. But I thought 30% all the way through was probably a, a good thing to, to use. So if you look at that, you can see how the reserve lowers. And when I got done and I looked at the bottom, I was like, that's at 30% utilities and um, also the 30% um, sales tax. And yet, look at how much we have. And I was like, oh man, you know, we're, we're good, we're good. But you know, we're not. Because if you look at what we did have, and then you look at what we have, there were some real decreases. If you look in the electric department, you're going from a balance of 14.7 to 8.8. 8, and that's millions, you know. So, so you're... A lot of extra money is going out, or not going out, but not coming in because of the revenues. We haven't, I haven't done anything with regard to um, the expenses. I mean, that would be our control piece of what we would do, how we could um, prepare for this. And we did talk a little bit in our, in our director's meeting about this and kind of talked about, um, well, John's idea was maybe we just need to put things on pause. We don't need to say, we're not going to spend our capital but we say, we're gonna wait three months or two months or however long, and then we're gonna decide what to do. We also have a, there's a raise coming up in May. And I don't know if that's something we wanna tamper with, but it's not that much money altogether. It's like 200,000. And when you're looking at these, books, it doesn't look like a lot, but yet it is a way to say to the employees, we kept your jobs, we kept you here, we paid you. And you know what, we're gonna wait a couple months to see if the city's gonna be able to give the raise. And you know, able isn't really a good word because obviously we have a lot of funds, but we built those funds up so that we would have them in case of something like this, but something else could happen afterwards. I mean, you know, down South, they were hit with this and then they got the tornadoes on top of it. I mean, they're broke, obviously, totally. And so it would be nice to be able to maintain this idea of having a, a decent reserve and like the $50,000 for what, um, Sarah is wanting would come out of the general fund. Um, the, you know, that's not a, a huge item either, you know, but it's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm totally for it because I think it builds so much goodwill that it's worth it. You know, it's worth $50,000 to build the goodwill towards the, the people that have helped us by paying $10 million in sales tax every year. I have a question on your spreadsheet um, okay. on the PFM uh, term investment. Why are we at a negative 9,222.91 in the water fund? I'm, I think it's, it's because of the money that we spent in January, but we're not truly negative. What it is, is we took the money out of another one of the funds. When we, when we, when we took money and used it for the, was it 5.4 million or 6.3? Do you remember, Brent? Yeah, it was one or the other between. It was, all. okay, so let's say it was 6.3. When we took that money, there wasn't enough money in the, and I did do journal entries later to move the money out of the other, you know, to like borrow. When they first paid it, it was like borrowed from the general fund and then it was paid back. And so this is probably just that the effect of that. I, um, I do have these automatically pick up when I go in and put in the date, it automatically picks it up and it could have easily been before it was fixed, but we don't have a negative balance. You know, that's an error of some sort. Well, where, what fund did that in, in December, late de 
December, you guys took 300,000 to finish off. I still haven't, don't understand all that for the center point. Yeah, project. anything for, I'm sorry, anything for center point would be out of the general fund. And so the monies would have come out of there when they were paid. One thing you need to remember when we do things here is that these things are cash. They're, they're cash money. They're not accruals. Um, accruals are like when we say we're going to have to pay it and we expense it, but the cash comes out later. And towards the middle of January is probably when the cash came out for, for this, uh, for that 300,000. I'm not really sure when, I'm not really sure when that was paid. It was paid this middle of January and it was applied to December of 2019 because we just did the capital on it. So it was already capitalized. So yeah, I, I, it's confusing, but it's just, um, the general fund has more money. I mean, there, obviously there's more than, than, than any of the others, but normally electric is very high. So bottom line, we're basically going to see an impact on sales tax and potential utility payments. Uh -huh. so, I mean, looking ahead, we need to start thinking conservatively for the next few months and see what we actually need to do um, and plan for the worst case scenario until we see how, how much our boat's going to float. Yeah, I, I I had a staff person they have, when the news about Boulder and other towns are having to lay off employees. We they, are not Boulder. Oh, happen here, and I, I said I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen here. We are not Boulder. Well, and like you said, the three percent, the ten percent, thirty percent, those are um, for the utilities. Those are, are what is it? Five, ten, and thirty. Those are, um, those are made up numbers. As we get to the end of April, we will actually post what the payments were because they're just posted to individuals' accounts and they're not posted for us in total. So it's not easy for me to go and say, okay, this is how much you know people paid. And so by the end of this month, we'll have a really good number. In sales tax, we won't really have a number for April until June, like June 8th, we'll get the report as to what was being paid. I, I wonder if there might be a way, you know, maybe to contact the, the state and see if they can give us kind of maybe their feeling, which would be way better than ours. We don't see what's going in, you know. So, but yeah, I think, well, I think, and you know, ask me this in three months, I'm gonna feel like I know a lot more than I do now. Well, you're, we're, you're working off assumptions right now. We know totally. there's gonna be, there's gonna be yeah. something uh, that's gonna, it's gonna change, but what, I mean, we're, it's an what? assumption. Yeah, it's all just, it's, this is just all assumptions, right? And I mean, the, I, we, we don't know. I, I mean, our people are, are fine. Our, our, our employees will pay their utility bills because our people have been taken care of, you know, financially, they're, they have jobs, you know, but there's people out there that, that don't. There's people out there that don't and don't know how to file for unemployment. Seriously. You said there was $200,000 in raises. Is that what you said? It kind of cut up when you said that. Um, I think it's like 221 or something. Well, here's how I do it. This is just a, this is just an easy way. We usually have about 7 million in a year. And so what I'm quoting is a year's raises, which would not affect this year. It will only affect a portion of this year. If we give 3% to everyone, which we won't, but that would be the maximum 3% of 7 million is the 210,000. But that 210,000 is a high number because that's what it would be for the next 12 months. Okay. So and that was budgeted in 2019, right? Sorry? And that was budgeted in 2019, right? Yes, yeah. when we did the okay. budget, we included a, a 3% uh, merit. This is the merit. And we had the other one that was like more of a, uh, it wasn't, oh. but it was more like that. Susan's on, she knows what it's called. But we had a, a straight one for everyone. And then this one depends on performance, so. Okay. We, um, I know I had Steve go through just the capital budget on public works side and we've got just, I think it's like four or five projects that we can hold for now easily that will put on hold over $4 million worth of projects. 
Um, was that that one on Riverview because they, they can't come? No, that's that's not even included in that. These are these are other paving projects that were for new roads and um, things that didn't fall under strictly for streets. Uh, there was some crushing of concrete that they can hold off on. It was a couple hundred thousand dollars. There's some work up at the airport that we already know has to be bumped out of this year's budget. Um, so. What about what about that with the 1% sales tax? Is that going to go down? Is that going to cut? I've had people ask me that. Is that going to cut out strictly for streets? No. Well, it'll hit it. In 2021. Yeah, next year, yeah. Yeah, next year. And I'd rather see us cut like some of those big projects that you said, Brent, instead of taking away people's raises that said that they were going to get and budget it in 2019. Yeah. That's just my opinion on that. Well, we have a lot of uh, large projects in the general fund. Um, one thing I think we need to um, think about is uh, maybe considering if, if it turns out, you know, we're going to know more, but if it turns out the revenues are really getting hit in the enterprise funds, we're allowed to move 9.9%, basically 10% from the general fund into the enterprise funds. And those are the ones that I see are going to be, you know, possibly hurting. But, you know, we don't, we don't know. It may be that everybody will pay the utility bills, but the sales tax will never come up, and then it will hit the general fund. But once we know which way we're, you know, wanting it to be, you can move that money, but it has to be by the, the council has to do a, a something, a resolution or something in order for that to get moved. And uh, it's not done very often. But. My, main, my main issue would be the general fund. Um, utilities, the only utility that we really have any debt in is the water enterprise. Um, the rest of them, we are pretty well um, in, in good shape. But I think the sales tax and the water enterprise fund are two of them that are really need to keep an eye on. Um, I'll have to tell on myself. It's kind of funny, <laughs> a little embarrassing too, but I need to get back on schedule. I never know what day it is, but uh, I for you, I I was late on my utility bill. <laughs> I oh thought no! I, Did you get a nasty letter? No, it was not nasty, but I got a letter. I go, oh my That's god! That's because I rewrote it. It's really nice now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I we know. stopped threatening to shut things. <laughs> I know, I'm, gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to claim the virus or else ask for a raise for a city council since we only make a hundred bucks. My bill was 200. <laughs> no, I <laughs> couldn't believe I did that. But it, uh, cause I thought the time's gone fast. But I go, I know I paid that. And I look back and it was sure enough, I didn't. <laughs> well, now that we're in utility right now, but will water <laughs> still be leanable, Brent? <laughs> um. Yeah, I do believe it's still leanable. They haven't changed that. It's just that we can't shut them off and we can't charge them fees. Okay. Yeah, we stopped the penalty. Okay. One thing that I do think that has showed up through this and everything is you hear over and over about uh, municipalities laying off part of their workforce or yeah. and that sort of stuff. And with us having the reserves, we've been able to uh, continue our people even when we're cutting down on the numbers that can be there and they're not at work and everything, we're still able to pay them. So I do think that uh, we are fortunate from that standpoint. Yeah, I, I agree. So I've had a couple of people kind of worried about it and go, no, I'm sure that's not going to happen. So we do, we, do have a, we do have a couple of maintenance projects, I classify them as. Uh, a couple of these are police related. I'll just kind of speak for you real quick, Jared. Um, there are things, that, there's some roofs that we need to get fixed. Um, and some of them are more expensive than others, but everything, you know, in the scope of things are relatively cheap. We still want to be able to move forward with those bids um, just to get, you know, we don't want to let our facilities get run down. Just so you're aware, if, if we do post some bids, that's what they'll be for. They'll be for maintenance issues and not for capital items. Are we doing a freeze on hiring as well? In terms of like lifeguards and that kind of stuff. I know that's seasonal and that'll be yeah. addressed down the road, but are we not doing any of that right now? At this moment, we're keeping them in the hopper. Um, we're keep the ones that are returning lifeguards and things like that. We've sent them contingent letters um, with no start date. 
okay. as of now. So. Oh, well, I would say at this point in time, we should probably just look at a hiring freeze, except for the two key positions we're looking at. Um, until we get through this. And um, those are the ones that we probably ought to be really looking at. Um, that's my opinion. Were you wanting to say a time period for the capital or were you, um, we'll just not spend anything till the next meeting or? What do you mean? We'll not spend anything till the next meeting. I mean, it's only two weeks. Talk about it each time, what we're going to do. That's fine. You want us to put something on when we get more data? Um, real data, yeah. Yeah, real data, and then have another discussion, or do we want to have this as a topic at each of the meetings, I think, is what she was looking No, at. I think you can keep us informed as, as you get information on this. Um, the, the big projects that we know we can look at and we're not pressed. I know we're moving forward with the field house and um, yeah. some of the other street projects and that, but if they're the ones that we could potentially have to uh, hold off on or curtail for right now, we could do later on. Um, you know, I, I think we can okay. look, look at those. And we can address those as we get more pertinent information uh, on where we're going to be with our our reserves and how it's going to impact next year's budgeting and this year's expenditures. So, Sounds good. I agree with Ron. I like the idea of us waiting and gathering more information and in this because we don't want to sit around and listen to the we don't know anything we're still waiting on getting information from you know I, we don't need that kind of update but just when you get the information share it with us yes okay good thank you okay yep. hey. very good thank you appreciate it useful information <laughs> does anybody else have any other questions or comments on this okay Thanks, Jeannie. You're welcome. Next is a presentation on extending the public health in emergency declaration declaration <laughs> for the city of Fort Morgan. Brent. Easier said than done, I guess. Um, yeah, we just wanted to go ahead and extend this for another 30 days yeah. um, for your um, reading pleasure um, just to keep us in the emergency so we can continue to participate. And they're now having, they're starting to have some FEMA meetings and um, other meetings that this will be important that we have our own declaration that we can fall back upon when, when and if we do um, ask for any federal funds or state monies. And this is the one we can rescind at any point in time if it gets lifted, everything get federal and state gets lifted. And yes, correct. Okay. Any other questions for, regarding this? Seeing none, I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I offer a resolution to extend the public health emergency declaration for the city of Fort Morgan. Second. I have a resolution by Allison Howe, a second by Doug Sachow. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Looks like it carries, Mr. Brennan. That resolution carries unanimously. Next is an update on the city manager recruitment schedule process. Um, as you've probably all seen that we've been, um, had some contact with the Mr. Lauren um, from the KRW firm. And it's gonna be a little bit longer with getting uh, city manager and chief hired in here because of the COVID portion of it. 
Um, we signed the amended contract with them on April 14th, I believe was the date that I had signed that. And uh, so we are moving forward. They have contacted us and I, I understand from talking with Brent that they have uh, done interviews with managers and staff. They're also wanting to do phone interviews and uh, that with each council member to get input as to what type of, what characteristics are we looking for in a city manager, uh, so on and so forth. So um, we'll, we're gonna move forward with it. We are still progressing. It, the time frame is just a little bit extended because of the current situation nationwide that we have um, for bringing somebody in via air or out, out of state. So um, we'll be putting that part together. And I believe Susan has sent photos, JPEGs and information that they'll need. And they're looking to uh, advertise this as soon as possible. Um, have we revised or reviewed the city manager um, job description? Yes, we have. Um, we did that in February. Okay, can you send me a copy of that? I'd like to review it. Um, probably wouldn't hurt for council to- Yeah, I'd like to see that. To look at, that's what I just said. Um, if you can send it to council, we'd review that um, on there and that, so that's pretty much where we are at. Um, I have asked Bren if he is still in capacity with, with hanging in for an extended period of time. I know this is not what, what he initially signed up for, but um, he's okay with it. And uh, so, we will get that process moving or keep that process moving. Uh, not. We're keeping you, Brent. <laughs> I'll get this all figured out and then I'll get <laughs> handed over to somebody new. <laughs> there you go. So, okay. Um, any questions? No. Oh, when did uh, it said I read that letter? They said they wanted to start talking to us soon. So when would that be? Um, as soon as you send them a deal, telling them when you're available. Okay. All right. I got a phone call today, so I'm I'm thinking they're gonna start reaching out to everybody. I spoke to today as well. Yeah, I sent them an email. I'm gonna have a conference with them tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. I already talked to Lauren, uh, I think yesterday morning and everything. So yeah, if you just reply in your email that he sent you, then he'll get a hold of you. Okay. All right. I believe he sent it out Sunday evening. So. I had my interview this morning. Okay. Twenty twenty one budget calendar. Should we cancel it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may not be the best thing to do. Wait till we have more pertinent information. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let John handle this one. This is, um, as we go through the budget calendar, we've just got certain milestones that, you know, we've published that we will go over in certain meetings. Um, the one tonight is just a, um, it's John's memo speaking to the conversations we had at the retreat and some of the general themes that council presented and, and what we will try to bring back as, as we as staff work on the 2021 um, budgets here shortly. So I'll turn it over to John. Okay, so um, I did what I could to find common ground in the um, in the list that you guys submitted of your top five, um, there was a fair amount. Um, a lot of people mentioned uh, trails, um, employee pay, NISP. Um, we kind of 
decided that things like NISP and Strictly for Streets and the Fieldhouse that are are going, they're going to go forward. And so we don't really need to list those as new priorities. Those were kind of last year's priorities and ongoing ones. So um, I also looked at um, the original surveys that we did before the retreat and uh, and saw where there was common ground on those as well. And so overall, we have some um, overlap in economic development, focus on the historic downtown, employee salaries, um, general cleanup of the city and enforcement of codes, kind of the blight thing, um, supporting local businesses. Um, <clears throat> and then on top of that, you have to put the kind of situation we find ourselves in now with the coronavirus and how you know our priorities might change. I think we need to be a little bit flexible um, in, in what we consider to be our goals for the 2021 budget um, until we find out how short we may come up on the 2020 budget and how long this might linger um, it's going to be difficult to uh, project that for at least a little while longer. So I guess if you've read this memo and if you are, um, you know, in agreement with, with the kind of areas of overlap that I've found and um, willing to kind of just go forward with those as our kind of overarching um, priorities with the understanding that in a couple of months our priorities might be completely different um, then we can just move forward and use these as kind of the background for developing the 2020 budget i think you did a, i think you did a good job putting these together john for with what you got um, and as you stated in there these aren't cast in stone we're, we're in a kind of a turmoil area at this point in time. So we need to see where we're actually going to be at kind of a moving target scenario, but we can, we can adjust these as we go get closer to or the last quarter, couple quarters of the year. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, once we have, if we want to, um, I think it's like July, we start doing the department presentations um, for the budget uh, process. And at that time, you know, we might revisit the, everybody in, in, on the staff will see these and, you know, see that those are the council's priorities. But when, once we get to actually developing the department by department budgets, um, if, there's, if there seems to be reason to revisit those and have it on the agenda again for, Kind of reconsideration we can also do that yeah. okay but yeah i think what you put together with what you had what works works for yeah, what we need i like it okay great any um, other comments or i'm sorry ali go ahead no i just yeah i just wanted to give some praise thanks john i think it looks good thank you Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Consent agenda, Mr. Brennan. Okay. Tonight's consent agenda includes item A, approval of the disbursements and payroll for March. Item B, approval of the minutes of the March 31st, 2020 City Council special meeting. And item C, approval of the minutes of the April 7th, 2020 City Council regular meeting. All matters on the consent agenda are considered routine business by the council and will be enacted with a single motion and a single vote by roll call. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is deemed necessary, that item should be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Okay, I would entertain a resolution accepting the consent agenda as presented unless anybody has any questions on any of the items. Your Honor, I have a resolution to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. 
Who we got the second? I have a. Um, I had Brian. He lit up first on from on mine. So <laughs> he was the Hollywood Square in the middle. <laughs> uh, so I have a resolution by Allison Howe and a second by Brian Erdialis. Vote by roll call. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That resolution carries unanimously. Public comment and audience participation for items not on the agenda. Uh, we do have three attendees at the meeting. If anybody would like to speak, if you could um, put a note in the chat box. I think seeing none. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Mayor. I, I have I you don't have anything on here, but I have a I have a couple of questions, so I don't that I want to ask we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, you tell me when. I didn't see anything on that. So next is reports by officials and staff, Mr. Brent, Mr. Nation. Okay, um, I think uh, Steve's got something that he would like to hey. tell you guys about. Welcome, Steve. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Um, just some positive news. I know we had a lot of conversation about the budget and the revenues and, and the struggles there, but with the recent uh, passage of the CARES Act, uh, Fort Morgan received $30,000 uh, just in cash from the federal government for, for the airport that we can use just for operations, um, you know, basically to pay our bills up there. So I got that paperwork today and got that signed and sent off. So that helps, right? I mean, it's 30,000 we don't have to spend uh, out of the general fund that we normally would have for either the FBO contract or um, you know utilities or whatever up at the airport. And it can be used for those purposes without any additional paperwork needed. So did you apply uh, that? Nice, uh, no, that was just part of the bill that was passed and they gave it to Airports based on various criteria and our amount was 30,000. Some airports got a lot more, some got less, but it was just uh, money free to us uh, through the CARES Act. So wow, glad to get that uh, paperwork signed off. We should be getting that money here. Um, uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but like I said, I just uh, sent the paperwork back in this morning. So Wow, great. Might take a while if it comes through the U.S. Postal Service. <laughs> Fair enough. Give a direct deposit. Yeah. Good. That's all I had. Thank you all. Okay. Did any of the other directors have anything? Sarah? Okay. Um, I did have one thing I, I did want to bring up and get council up to speed on where we are. Uh, myself and John and Ty spent some time out at the golf course today. Uh, some of you have been following. We've been um, working on things out there. Um, it looks like with what the, the progress that the maintenance staff is making, uh, we're hoping we're shooting for having the facility uh, ready to open um, potentially by Saturday. And I wanna put that caveat on there of potentially. Uh, we have been informed by the health department now that uh, there are guidelines for reopening facilities and they have applications and other things that we have to fill out and submit to them for approval before we can actually have the facility back up and running. And you basically have to go through and walk through how you're gonna have social distancing and how you're gonna handle all that type of stuff. Uh, Ty's been working on that um, already today. We're hoping to have that ready to submit tomorrow. And so, but we have no idea what the turnaround time on what the health department is on that type of approval. We're hoping it's quickly. Uh, I see Allison smiling down there. So let's hope it's quickly. Um, so the, the grounds crews up there have been doing some really good work. Uh, they were doing some additional work on some of the greens that would have been considered wintertime work when we closed the um, facility originally in March. 
Uh, it looks like they're having some very positive results um, with some of the new techniques that they're trying with the facility up there. Uh, I do understand that um, there has been some reports that um, Ty would have normally submitted and we would have gotten out to you guys ahead of time um, on some of the going on. And I apologize. That's part, partly having me as the new guy figuring out which reports go to who and when and all that stuff. Uh, so we'll, I'll work with Ty and doing a better job of getting those things out to you guys. But right now we would, we would like to see the facility um, back in use on Saturday um, if we can get the blessing of the health department to move mm -hmm. in that direction. Um, and so it's one of those, yes, <laughs> I see Kevin clapping. So, uh, so we're hoping the health department was very cooperative when Ty was talking to him this afternoon. And um, I think it'll, um, we'll get all that stuff submitted in the morning and get through it. So did I miss anything with that, Ty? No, I think it's important to note the, the hardest part um, right now is how to collect fees. Um, the, the orders or the direction from the health department is basically to not collect fees, to only do online payments and that kind of thing. So I'm trying to figure out some way to do a contactless credit card payment um, just because the majority of our players, you know, don't use online tee times. They tend to just show up to the golf course. So I went ahead and um, kind of wrote out how I think we can accomplish this. Uh, we'll submit it and then see what we hear back as far as recommendations from the health department and how we can move forward. Um, there's been great progress on the greens. Kevin, I'll try to send you a couple pictures, but when they pulled the cover off of 16, uh, the growth is just unbelievable, really, um, from the, the having the greenhouse effect of this cover that they put on a couple weeks ago. So it's still going to take a little bit of time to get those greens cut down to length um, where we had the covers. Right now, they're cut at about a half inch. This afternoon, they were cutting them to a quarter inch. Um, and, you know, our playing height is 0.110, I think. So it'll be another week or two before they're cut down to where we're actually a true playing height, but um, we'll get it open as best as we can and as safe as we can. Um, there's just a lot of logistics to figure out still. Okay, Thanks. that was one of my questions. I had people asking me, so I was gonna ask that about. Yeah, right. yeah it was news to me to when I finally got a call back from the health department. Um, it was news to me that we needed to apply or be approved to reopen. So we're trying to get that figured out uh, with them um, and we'll finalize it tomorrow morning. It's, it sounds like we'll have similar approval processes for the, like the library museum and yeah. our other you know, public facing things. So we're gonna start working on that internally and find out what we have to do as we as the city come out from underneath all of the, the COVID um, you, restrictions and everything. That'd be a nice thing to have in the newspaper or something because people are asking. Yeah, it's, it's one of those where the conversations that we've had with some of the health department people, you know, went along the lines of, well, we watched the same press conference everybody else did, and we were trying to, you know, write notes as fast as we could because we're not getting a lot of information, you know, to work with. And so we're trying to respond as quickly as we can. And I think that's, you know, the, the thing that everybody kind of has to remember is this is a very fluid situation that we find ourselves in the middle of. And some of these initial assessments that you hear coming out of these press conferences, once everybody has a time to sit down and think about it, even the governor's office is issuing clarifications of his, you know, orders and all that stuff just to make sure we're doing things right. And so, you know, we're doing the best we can and we'll continue to, you know, rebound and adjust accordingly. Shoot us a little email once if you get. Yeah. Okay. From Andrea. Quick health department hat, so I'm changing hats really quick. The health department, we have a bilingual information line that we have staffed Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um, any businesses that have questions, definitely call us. We have extended additional staff to answer business questions. Um, one thing that Brent mentioned that's really critical for everyone to understand is that the state will issue um, some type of guidelines, but then we have some local control based on what our current rates are here in Morgan County. So if we still have a lot of high cases, if we still have um, high hospitalization rates, if we're still climbing and we don't have testing kits, 
we are not going to move as fast as other counties just based on what's going to keep our citizens safe. So even though it sucks that we're not doing regular things right now, um, it's just about saving lives. So um, definitely come to the health department through the phone and we'll um, get all those business questions answered. But we're pretty consistent with press releases and the city of Fort Morgan is on weekly calls with the, city, with the health department as well. So um, uh, we are trying our best. Great, great. I tried to touch base with her about library, museum, you know, swimming pool, all kinds of those things that are gonna start coming up in the next few weeks. And um, it was a real nice conversation. I talked to Heather, I think, um, and she was a big help. And then there is a C, uh, Colorado Parks and Rec uh, webinar tomorrow uh, discussing aquatics. So I'm gonna try to jump on with that. It's a conference call, I think. Um, and we'll learn more about the pool, but we're just gonna have to take these things as they come and really you know, we may have a lot of delayed starts on certain things like the swimming pool. We were hoping to open on the 23rd of May and I just don't know how any, any way that's ever gonna happen at this point. So we'll have to pick some delayed start dates. Um, one other update that Ali, you'll wanna know about, um, the Department of Parks and Wildlife, they're gonna have their meeting on the 30th of April via Zoom. So I should know for sure on the uh, trail grant. Uh, I think it looks like, I mean, I'm really, really positive. Um, I think we're going to get the full funding. So that's still exciting. We're going to be able to do that project this year. So um, what about the letter that we got from Brian that was sent to Brian on the star athletic that needs to be referred to the health department, doesn't it not? Or yeah, I, and I have already reached out to Brian and suggested that he do that with both of those companies and okay. have them start that dialogue. So and I, I did that this after, after okay. I applied to you. So they're going to do that. So I have a real quick question. Allie, do I send all these golfers phone numbers to you? If golfers bug you, send them to me. Yeah, send them to the health department. Hold up on here. You're going to be the. <laughs> hold up on it uh but you know there's gonna be some the course isn't gonna be open like it typically is i think from the standards that you're gonna have to set tight there's gonna be some uh parameters some protocol and some things and even some uh, yeah green i mean if you want to you know take a look at the city of denver they're gonna open their courses tomorrow um, their list of restrictions is like three pages long. Um, so it's going to be a different world. The cups will be upside down. You know, the, the, the balls won't drop in the cup. Um, it'll be single rider only. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of restrictions. The hard part is how to, how to collect fees. Um, hopefully I can figure out a solution to that, either using our tablets. Um, you know, we have, we can use tablets on the golf course now for, like the beverage cart and stuff. So we're hoping we can somehow use that and make it a, you know, a contact list transaction where the employee doesn't have to touch the customer's credit card and the customer doesn't have to touch the pin pad and those kind of things. So I'm trying to figure that out right now. Um, but yeah, it'll be, I mean, it's just scary. It, it won't be normal for a long time. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't. Well, we do grocery uh, stores. What's the I mean, that would be less than what we do. I, I know. Uh, you go to the grocery <laughs> store and you use the pin pad. I understand. So, yeah. There are gloves, little, those little pin gloves. No, that's what I put. We do have a good supply of uh, uh, food service gloves. They're disposable gloves. And um, my thought was we have everybody slip a glove on before they do their pin number and then we throw it away. Well, there's some of this stuff is just over, you know, one size doesn't fit all on, on some of it. So anyway, it's what it is. <laughs> well, I, I know we're at the mercy of the health department, but it'd be great to get it open ASAP. I know dues are coming on May 1st and uh, the golf is be one thing that's making money for a little bit for us. I mean, we need as much money coming in as possible. Well. The golfers just got to realize they got to listen to the staff and 
and the requirements that are going to be put on out there. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, something we're really got to try to do better this year, um, just getting everybody to follow the policies that are in place. So, so it, I'm, I'm sure there'll be other comments in the future but one one question or one thing that was brought up quite a bit when i spoke to a few golfers is that so um if you look at say down like at the park you get a, quite a bit of people hanging out down there that aren't social distancing i know people are walking but you got kids out there sitting not social distancing um across the street from me last wednesday before the snow hit there was eight cars out there with kids using the skate park and i feel like if we're going to shut down hard on the golf course, we should also look at the skate park, the riverside, as far as people hanging down there. I mean, I don't think we should just go. It's not just one particular thing, but I think we need to look at the whole thing as well. That, that was one thing that was really brought up to me. Sure. Well, and hopefully, you know, we're on the home stretch now where we're going to be opening things up. So hopefully that won't be an issue any longer. No, I agree. Thank you, Ty. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll try to do a better job of forwarding uh, Underwood's reports. He sends me a report every month on the progress um, that they've made. Uh, one startling number is they hauled 17,800 pounds of scrap out of the yard um, and got rid of what they called the bone yard which was just full of junk. Um, but you know, they've trimmed all the sidewalks. We've zipped the cart paths down to a gravel path surface, thanks to the streets department for their help there. Um, you know, tree trimming, the work that we've gotten done in these winter months since Matt Underwood took over has been remarkable. Um, and I think we're starting to see a lot of improvement in the greens now that the temperatures are warming up and everybody's really optimistic that it's gonna really turn around as far as the putting surfaces go in the next couple of months. So they're pretty excited up there. Um, they're proud of the work they're getting done. Um, they, they really do care and I hope people understand that. Um, and they're busting their butt trying to make it the best it can be. Matt does a good job. Yeah, they, they all do. I mean, it, yeah, they all do. They, they all work very hard from the golf course crew to the parks crew, you know, to our streets crew. That's the best part probably of working for the city is we really do have people that care and, and they, they show it every day um, in the job they do, so. Matt. Okay. Give them all our thanks. Yes. So, are there any others, Brent? I nope. think that does it. Sarah, you got anything? Nope. Okay, bids, meetings, and announcements. Mr. Brandon. Okay, we've got a few bids out right now. The city's accepting sealed bids for a 1500 KVA pad mounted transformer until 3 p.m. on April 22nd. Uh, sealed bids for the purchase of surplus city property consisting of excess dirt until 3 p.m. on April 29th. Uh, and sealed bids for police department roof replacement and Fort Morgan Humane Society roof replacement until 3 p.m. on May 21st. Um, I won't really go over the meeting calendar. That's still a little bit up in the air. The next city council regular meeting will be May 5th. Um, at this point, it's scheduled as an online virtual meeting, but um, we'll see what happens. Um, and just to back up a little bit back to the public comment, we did get somebody put a comment in the um, chat box thank you for approving the funding for the businesses andrea espresso of all about you yeah she's great i did i see i did see that one after we got into the conversation so yeah it was a little after yeah her time but well thanks you all staff you are doing a good job keeping things rolling um appreciate what you what you all do and if there's nothing else to come before council. Hey, I, have, I have a question, Ron. No, you're done. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Is Lynn muted? <laughs> Back in. I'll second Nelson. that. Where's Nelson when you need him? <laughs> What's your question, Lynn? Okay. 
I, I sometimes I need to bring up stuff that's not on there. This is not too much, but I wanted to thank Brent for the three months worth of meetings that was very informative. And I'm wondering if those could be done every month instead of reading three months worth. And I understand why, why you, it took some work to get that done. Yeah, that was, you know, those, those are, you know, Sarah's reports coming through, you know, my office. And I was, that was one of those points of confusion where I wasn't for sure if John was sending those out with, you know, your inner mailings or not. And by the time we talked about it and figured it out, I was all like, oh, wow, I'm three months behind already. So I figured yeah, I better just get you guys caught up. Yeah, that yeah, was, I figured good that. to go. And now we will go on to a regular routine and yeah. I'll, I'll figure out like Ty's maintenance reports and we'll get you things that you've been in, that, that you've been seeing really on a regular helpful. basis. It makes you feel like you know what's happening a little bit instead of just hanging out here on a limb. But I yeah. really appreciated that. And, um, and, and just if the staff would send us stuff, they think that all of us would like to know, very helpful meeting every two weeks. It's okay, but I want to know what you're all doing. Okay. Okay. Nothing else coming, Clint? You got anything? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing else coming before this council. We uh, meeting is adjourned. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye. Thank you.